A very warm good afternoon to one and all. Today I am going to discuss drug acting on respiratory system in very short and elaborative way. Very easy and elaborative way, sorry. As we know, respiratory system is subject to multiple disorders which includes respiratory infections, allergic disorders, inflammatory disorders and the air flow obstructions which usually interfere with its physiological functions. So in order to manage these respiratory conditions we are having a group of drugs. So I am going to discuss these drugs broadly. First is the classification, major category of drug that is administered to manage that respiratory disorders. So this category of drugs are bronchodilators, corticosteroids, chromoglycates, leukotriene receptor antagonist, antihistamines, cuff preparations and nasal decongestants. These are the seven category of drugs which we usually give in combination to manage all type of respiratory disorders. So basically respiratory disorders are managed by two or more than two of these category drugs. So in this lecture we will discuss these drugs in detail. Before that one should know some basic things about respiratory drugs administration. So first we will complete that basic things of drug administration and then we gradually proceed. So drug acting on respiratory system especially for asthma and COPD are basically involved. They are affecting the lungs. So we have to manage it as early as possible. So systemic drugs will not work much effectively and it will not show the desired result very fastly. So that is why we are giving drugs in the form of inhalation. So major advantage of administering these drugs through inhalational way is it enhances the therapeutic effectiveness because it acts directly to the respiratory tract. So the systemic time first pass effect is minimized. Minimum systemic effect, unnecessary systemic body of functions are not disturbed because of the drugs and rapid relief from the acute attacks. Okay, so if patient is having acute asthmatic attack, we will not give tablets inhalational drugs are usually effective next is so for administering this drug broad category of drugs which we have already discussed we are using inhalational methods and there are various devices used to administer these drugs in the form of inhalation so these devices are first is mated dose inhaler first device which we are using everywhere in all hospitals, in all clinical setting, and even in majority of in our families also, we are using method dose inhalers. They are pressurized canisters that has drugs in the form of fume or particles. Sometimes they are having CFC or sometimes non-CFC proponent. And for this drug or these canisters, we need to have hand-to-mouth coordination. And patient can take it by their own. Second category is spacer used with MDIs, sometimes with MDIs as you can see the picture or sometimes alone also we can use. This drug has least effect on the oropharyngeal mucosa and it directly delivers the lung on the into the lower respiratory tract. Third is dry powder inhalers that is also called rota inhalers or tribulars, aquilars. In this drugs are in the form of capsules we have to crush that capsules and then person is inhaling it in the form of fume and last is nebulizer everyone has seen the nebulizer it converts the drug liquid thing into the mist or fume and that high speed oxygen or the fume is inhaled by the patient the droplets are very fine minute in size so that it will reach the lower respiratory tract very easily which is not possible by other means of or through other devices so now we are going to discuss these drugs one by one. These drugs that usually used to manage the respiratory disorders. First is bronchodilators. Bronchodilators, as its name suggests, dilators. 
Majority of respiratory disorders are because of bronchoconstriction. So our target is to relieve that constriction and to dilate the bronchus in order to make the patient comfortable and to relieve the breathlessness. So classification of bronchodilators includes means earlier we have discussed the major category of drugs, seven groups. Now this bronchodilator itself has various subtypes, subcategories. So first is classification of bronchoreceptors, it includes adenoreceptor agonist, adenoreceptor agonist, which is selective beta 2 agonist. Next is anti-muscuranic bronchodilators and xanthin derivatives. Xanthin derivatives. All this group of drugs have common action. The action is same, bronchodilatation. But their mechanism of action varies. That is why they are of different categories. Adenoreceptor agonist will act in a different way. Anti-muscuranic drugs will act in a different way. And xanthin derivatives will act in a different way. So we will discuss these drugs, how they act, what is the things in our next slides. Next is bronchodilators. First adenoreceptor agonist, first category of drug, beta 2 agonist. As we know, there are two types of receptor in human body. First is alpha receptors and the beta receptors. So alpha is usually for the sympathetic nervous system. They help in constriction. Everything is if alpha is stimulated, there is a constriction and beta is responsible for dilatation. So beta adenoreceptor agonists, they act on the beta 2 receptor and they help its function. That means it act on the smooth muscles and help in dilatation. Stimulate beta 2 receptor agonist, smooth muscles of the lung and promotes dilatation, thus relieving the bronchospasm. They are Further two types, short acting and the long acting. Short acting are example of short acting beta 2 agonist are salbutamol and terbutaline. You can see this tab table for its formulation, action and doses. It is presented here in much simpler and easy way and you can add it. Further the details of this drug, individual drugs, you can learn it from your drug books. Long acting beta 2 agonist are means their duration of action is much more. The short acting are usually given in case of acute attacks and long acting is in the form of maintenance therapy type. Now the common adverse effect of bronchodilators are common adverse effect means beta 2 agonist what it will cause it will usually cause tachycardia and palpitation, headache and tremor. Beta 2 agonist means whether it's a short acting or a long acting, whether it's a salbutamol or terbutaline, fomatoline, all will have this common adverse effect. Next is bronchodilators, other is adenoreceptor agonist, uh, less suitable for the and less suitable. They are less suitable for bronchodilatations and usually not given other drugs like ad adrenaline and non epinephrine and all they are also having the same type of action but they are usually used in case of prophylaxis so basic nursing alert with while using bronchodilators are within two minutes or more of puff means after immediately if you are giving these drugs in the form of puff bronchodilators patient has to raise the mouth and there must be one minute space between the puffs Always take the drugs on scheduled time. Always monitor the patient heart rate and respiratory rate, rate and for its rhythm also. And contact the physician if you are getting any type of severe symptoms, adverse effect like nervousness, insomnia, restlessness, tremor and become severe. So this is all about this class. If you like this class, please subscribe and like. Next we will discuss in part 2. Thank you so much.